Let's take a look at Basic Image Adjustment 101 in Photoshop. The link to this image file is in the description for this video if you want to follow along. Uh, otherwise, the process is pretty much the same for any image file that you want to adjust, whether that be uh, JPEG, TIFF, a render, uh, a scan, any type of image file. Uh, I usually even run photos from my phone through this adjustment process. This is an image I pulled off the internet, so the first thing I want to do is check the image size and resolution. So if I go to image in the drop down menus up top and go to image size, this will bring up the image size dialog box. And I can see this image is pretty good size, 7.5 by 9.2 inches but it is screen resolution and I want to change that to print resolution. Uh, first thing I want to do is ensure that resample is not checked. I do not want Photoshop to eliminate any of the pixel information in this image nor do I want it to try to interpret or make up information that's not there. Resample is unchecked Again, we're at 72, which is screen resolution, and we want to be at 300, which is print resolution. And you'll notice what happened is that made the size of this image quite a bit smaller, uh, just over three times smaller. And that's okay for our purposes here. You just need to make note of that size and know that moving forward, if you were going to place this image into Illustrator or InDesign, you need to follow the number one rule of thumb with images, which is always smaller, never bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK from here. And when it comes to adjustments, you do have all of the adjustments available under image adjustments here for Photoshop. The thing about these drop down menu adjustments is they are a one time shot and they are destructive to your image. So what we actually want to do is work through the Adjustments palette. If you go to Window Adjustments and click on Adjustments, it will open up the Adjustment palette over here on the right hand side. And you want to use these because what they do is drop an actual adjustment layer into your image that you can then go back and change, turn the visibility off and on to see what the changes are and it is non-destructive to your image. We are going to start with a levels adjustment that's in the top row, second one in. And when I click on that, it brings up my levels dialog. And what you're looking at here in the center is what's called the histogram for the image, which is uh, basically the color information. It's high and low points. To adjust this, there are these tabs here underneath the histogram, which act like sliders. On the left, we have the dark or black for the image. And what you want to do is pull that in to where the histogram just starts to rise up from the zero value. And then on the right hand side here, you have the high key or um, high end white information for the image and we want to do the same thing we want to pull this tab into the point where the histogram just starts to rise up from zero the gray one in the middle is the midpoint for the information and more often than not uh, you just want to let that one adjust automatically all right that's our levels adjustment um, if i open up my layers palette here you can see that I have my background or original image and then above that now I have a layer called levels one. That is the adjustment that we just made. If I turn the visibility off on that layer you can see the difference that it made for the image. It brightened it up, brought the colors out. That's our first adjustment. I'm going to go back to my adjustments palette and the second adjustment that we want to do is called curves. It's the top row, third one over. Again, you're going to see that histogram and then the low key or black over here on the left at the bottom is the slider 
and the high key or the white over here on the right is a slider. What we want to do, and this works, this is kind of another standard thing for any image. We want to lock the midpoint by clicking on this diagonal line here that the ends represent the high and low key. We want to click on that, drop a point in the middle, and that'll lock in our midpoint. And then what you want to do is move in your dark, about a half a grid square, and move in your high key or white, about a half a square also. And that's all we're going to do with that. Basically what that's doing is bringing up the contrast in the image. Again, if I go back to my layers palette, you can see now <clears throat> on the very top is the curves adjustment that we just did. I can turn off the visibility and you can see the difference that it makes uh, with the colors and contrast. Everything now is very vibrant and has good saturation. Uh, we've made a lot of good work on this already. The next thing we want to do is bring up the colors a little bit more and uh, fine-tune the colors that are actually popping out from the image. So I'm going to go back to my adjustments palette. As soon as my machine is done playing with the whirling beach ball of death. All right, back to the adjustments. What we want to do now is a hue saturation and second row all the way on the left. And that'll bring up the hue saturation dialog box. Um, you can adjust the color tint here. To start with, you want to make sure that you're on the master in this drop down here. And what we're going to do is bring up the saturation to about 10. And you can see that really makes our image very, very vibrant. However, with that adjustment, you can see here uh, in about the center of the image, these yellows now in these, uh, I believe they're aspen trees, are a little overly or hyper realistic. So if we go to our drop down where right now it says master and change it to yellows, we can address those yellows very, very specifically. And what I want to do is take their saturation down to about minus five. And then I'm going to take the lightness down to about minus 10. And that's just fine tuning color. And you can see if I open up this drop down menu again, you have all of the colors present in the image available to adjust. I'm going to call that good. Uh, in Photoshop, if you just click and drag on these eyeballs, you can turn off the visibility on multiple layers at once. We can now see uh, the adjustments that we've done, just working up the palette in order. And that is starting to look pretty nice. All right. I'm going to go back to my adjustments palette one more time. If you take a look up here in the hills, uh, there's some reds up here that are just, they're not popping quite as much as I would like. They're a little muddy and a little on the brown side. So what I'm going to do is a selective color adjustment. The selective color adjustment is in the bottom row, second to last icon. And this is going to come up in reds for me, uh, I believe, because that was the last adjustment I was in. And that's what we want, are those reds. And what I'm going to do is take the magenta, which is red, make that about plus 30. Uh, again, I'm watching the image as I'm adjusting and dialing this in. And then... To give those reds some body, I want to add some black. So I'm going to take that up to about plus 25. And that is our adjusted image. Again, I can drag down the eyeballs and click up through my adjustments and see the changes we have made. 
if I wanted to go back and readjust or change one of these layers, I can select the layer. Uh, I'm going to go into this levels adjustment again. And then all the way on the to the left, the layer thumbnail is showing that levels histogram. If I double click right there, that will reopen that levels adjustment and allow me to make changes and fine tune a little farther. And you can see what that did. Um, notice if I move the black around, uh, it's adding, subtracting. I'm going to put that back about where it was right here around 10. And that is your